video, I am preparing to make caramel icing for a cake that I made. It, it, it was a layer cake that was gluten-free. And I decided to put this caramel icing on it. Um, this recipe comes from an old one that I've used for a long time. And I got the recipe from a lady that I go to church with. And her name was Miss Ufala. And I remember going to her house for a visit. And she offered us tea or coffee with some cake. She had several cakes to choose from and I chose caramel iced cake and after eating it um, I, I knew it was a cake that I would want to make um, in a future date and I told her that uh, I had hoped to make a cake with that type of icing I'd never done it before and she said well I'll get the recipe for you and that just kind of floored me because I had no idea that she would give me her recipe for an icing that was such an old-fashioned uh, type recipe. Uh, a lot of people, you know, kind of hoard their recipes, but she was just so nice and uh, one of the nicest ladies I think I've ever known. And so the next Sunday at church, she brought me that little piece of paper that I showed you, a handwritten a recipe for her icing and she said now if you need a good cake recipe I can give that to you as well and I said now I've got a good layer recipe that I use um, I'll just look forward to using this recipe and she said well if you have any questions when you get into making it um, just call me well that began just a wonderful wonderful relationship with this lady uh, I remember when I started going to that church, I started singing in the choir even before I went there. And she would just motion for me to come and sit beside of her. So this recipe brings back so many memories. And um, I'll try to get into uh, show it, telling you exactly what I'm doing here. But I wanted to share that part of the story because it just makes um, watching this video, I think, for... Uh, for me, as I watch myself prepare it, I think back to those days, and it just brings back so many wonderful memories. Now, as you've already seen, I added the butter, the milk, the brown sugar, and the vanilla flavoring into the pot. And at the same time, I know you can't see it, but over to the other side, I was preparing another pot with the same recipe, just divided it in half. And the reason I had that going was to prepare it to put on the cake uh, in between the layers. And this particular pot here, I'm going to use to put on the top and on the sides. So you just put it all, the, all of the ingredients into the pot and let them simmer until they come to a boil. Now, as you can see, this pot over to the side is a smaller pot and it is a thicker and heavier pot. It conducted the heat so much better and more evenly that I was able to get this part um, ready to put the confectioner's sugar in way before that big pot that is much thinner and less heavy. But it'll still work, it just takes a little longer. Now, I just put the confectioner's sugar into the small pot and um, and getting that all mixed up. And you want to mix it to the point where you can't see any little specks of the confectioner's sugar. Now, if you have a few, that's okay. And once the cake sets, you really can't see them that much, especially for this part of the recipe where I'm putting it between the layers. Now, I don't know about you, but um, it is kind of a process with getting the caramel onto the cake. You have to work very quickly because once you put that confectioner's sugar into the recipe, it thickens up and you want to be able to uh, get it onto the cake while it's still hot. And let me tell you, let me warn you, this is very hot. So make sure you don't touch it with your with your fingers or you know, think you're going to pop a little piece into your mouth. It is hot. It will burn you. 
um, to be very careful. And, you know, get your layers on uh, the way that you want them and put the icing in between and get it all spread out. And while that was going on here, uh, my other pot was coming up to boil and, you know, I was just progressing along. Now, with this recipe, once it your uh, ingredients in the pot come to a boil, you're going to want to stir it, stir it, stir it. Do not let it burn. And it's, you know, it's a fine line between being just right and burning. So continue to stir it. And once it started to boil, I set my timer on my stove for four minutes. And sometimes this process can take four to five minutes. And again, it all depends on the the weather and I know but some people say that and don't believe it but it definitely plays a factor in when you're making any types of icings or anything similar to candy um, so here I'm putting the confectioner sugar in uh, it reached the color that I like so and it was somewhere between four and five minutes so you know it's not written in stone for it to be four minutes from the time it starts to boil but once you start to put the confectioner's, confectioner's sugar in, you know, you're gonna wanna get a good blending here. So take your time, scrape the bottom, make sure there's no sugar on the bottom, on the sides, and continue on with the mixing. And you're going to, um, of course, I have this pre-measured out, and I'm just, you know, taking my time here, getting a good mix, because this is going to go on the top of the cake and on the sides. So take your time in this process. Um, what? Not too much time. You don't want it to get cold. You're still you know, pretty safe as far as the temperature because it does get really, really hot and it takes it a little while. But once you start putting all of that on the cake, it's going to cool off very quickly. So work very quickly from this point. And I've got my offset spatula that I'm using to get a good spread. And you can see there, there's a few little uh, little pieces of confectioner's sugar, but that's going to get covered up or, you know, you can remove them, add more uh, caramel to the top and get that as, you know, thick as you like uh, and as smooth as you can on top. And then the next process, we're going to start putting it on the sides. And guys, you've got to work quickly because um, it goes on better if it's really, really still hot and, you know, you just, I've got this on a Lazy Susan. I've got the cake plate on a Lazy Susan so that I can just spin it as I go around putting the icing on the sides. Now, if your icing starts to cool off and it gets too thick, you can always put it back on the stove, add a, just a tiny bit of cream uh, to it to thin it up a little but your best bet is to continuously try to put this on the cake all in one, uh, at one time. Uh, it just does so much better. And here you can see, I've got the icing on the cake and there's your old fashioned caramel icing. And um, it turned out perfectly. Thank you all for watching the video today. I hope you have a great day. May God bless each and every one of you.